This is the first video for section 3.3 on more check digit systems. In this lecture, I'll be talking about UPC and routing numbers. So UPC code is something that you're probably pretty familiar with. You see it on most objects that you find in the grocery store. And the format of the UPC is the 12 digit number that you see under the pattern of light and dark bars. We're gonna be talking about this barcode in the next section. For now, what I want us to do is focus on these digits down here. That's the actual numerical information that's identifying the product that this barcode is printed on. So like I said, the format is 12 digits long, and we've got different groups of numbers here. We've got the category of goods written first. The manufacturer ID is the next five digits. The product ID is the next five digits. And then the 12th digit is a check digit. So just talking a little bit more about what those groups of numbers represent. The category of goods is sort of a broad category. Most fixed weight products are in category zero. So most things that are prepackaged that you find in the grocery store where every package is more or less exactly the same, that would have a zero as that first digit. Coupons, as another example, are in category five. The next five digits identify the manufacturer. So for example, anything manufactured by Coca-Cola would have the first group of five digits after that very first digit be 49000. And then the five digits after that identify the particular product. So a 12 ounce can of Diet Coke manufactured by Coca-Cola after the 49000 would have code 01134. And then the 12th digit, the very last digit is a check digit. And that's the part that I wanna focus on in this video. So the way that we validate a UPC number, obviously we first check that there's 12 digits and then we do a calculation, right? So the validation process says we multiply the first digit by three and then we add the second digit. So we don't multiply the second digit by three. The third digit we multiply by three and then we add the fourth digit. So we have this kind of running total where every other digit gets multiplied by three. And then we add all that up and we wanna make sure that the check digit is chosen so that that sum ends in zero and we include the check digit in that sum, right? So the very last digit will be also added to our total. Okay, so this is a very common way that we do these check digit systems and it's called a weighted sum. So we have a weight that we multiply each digit by. So you remember that we multiply the first digit by three, we multiply the third digit by three, the fifth digit and so on. So the second, fourth, sixth, and so on, those digits aren't getting multiplied by anything, but we could say that we're multiplying them by one. So when we leave the digit alone, we're multiplying the digit by one. And then we take all of those weighted products, those multiplication results, and add them all up. And the result of doing that is called a weighted sum. Okay, so let's see an example of this. So we've got a UPC number here. Let's check to make sure that this is valid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take every other digit and multiply by three. We're gonna have a running total. So my digits are zero, five, two, eight, zero, zero. I'm gonna continue over here, four, eight, eight, two, six, seven. All right, so every other digit I'm gonna multiply by three. So that gets multiplied by three, multiplied by three, multiplied by three, multiplied by three, multiplied by three. And the other digits are getting multiplied by one. Now I don't really have to put the times one here, but I think it's helpful just so that we can match up with the pattern that we saw before. The pattern of weights was three, one, three, one, three, one, and so on. So by writing the ones, I'm sort of helping myself make sure that I'm on track with my pattern that I'm supposed to be getting. So now I just work out these products. Again, grab a calculator if that's helpful for you. Zero times three is zero. Five times one is five. Two times three is six. Eight times one is eight. That gives me zero, zero. Four times three is 12. 8, 8 times 3 is 24, 2 times 1, 6 times 3 is 18, and 7 times 1. So now I take all of those numbers, all of those products, and add them up. So 0 plus 5 plus 6 plus 8 plus 0 plus 0 plus 12 plus 8 plus 24 plus 2 plus 18 plus 7. And when I add all those up, and I've got my calculator here, I added all those up, I get 90. And because that ends in 0, this checks, this is a valid UPC number. So it's a little bit of a more complicated process than things that we've seen before, but this system has some advantages as we're gonna see. Okay, so one of the advantages is that this system can detect some of the errors that we weren't able to detect with some of the systems that we talked about in the previous section. So here we have a transposition error. The systems that we talked about before were not able to detect transposition errors. But what about our UPC here? 
So remember that the way that we detect an error is we validate or try to validate the new erroneous number. And what we're hoping for is we're hoping that the check digit won't check out. Because if the check digit doesn't check out, that means that we know something is wrong, and so we know that there's some kind of error. Okay, so let's see how this goes. So just like we did in the previous example, we're going to run our checking process on this new number. So 073000385936. My wait pattern is 31, 31, and so on. Make sure you start with the three, right? So it's not one, three, one, three, it's three, one, three, one. So I get zero, seven, three times three is nine, zero, zero, zero. Three times three is nine, eight, 15, nine, nine, and six. Okay, so I'm gonna add up, I'm not gonna bother adding the zeros because they're not gonna contribute to my total. So I've got seven plus nine, plus 9, plus 8, plus 15, plus 9, plus 9, plus 6. Again, I'm going to type that in my calculator here. 7 plus 9 plus 9 plus 8 plus 15 plus 9 plus 9 plus 6 works out to be 72. And when I look at that 72, I say, wait a second, that's supposed to end in a 0. So this doesn't end in 0. So that means two things. One, it means this UPC number is invalid. And then what I conclude from that is that the error was detected. Because the new number after the error occurred, because I can tell that, that new number is incorrect, that it's invalid, that means that I know that there's something wrong, that something happened. So, in fact, this UPC system detects all substitution errors. If you remember some of the systems we talked about before, there were most substitution errors, but there might be some that weren't caught. So UPC system detects all substitution errors and 89% of all transposition errors. So unless there's a certain couple of digits that can get switched, this is going to detect almost all those transposition errors. But because of the repeating pattern, because it's 313131, three, three, if I have a jump transposition error, and remember what that means is that if there's a digit in between two digits that get swapped, well, those two digits are still going to be multiplied by the same two weights, and so that's not going to detect that error. This UPC system will not be able to detect any jump transposition errors. Let's talk about one more system in this video. So a personal check, which you can see a representation of here, has a bunch of numbers on the bottom. And by the way, if you're noticing that those numbers on the bottom are a little weird looking, we're going to talk about that in the next section as well. But what I want to focus on is this number right here. This is called the routing number on your check. So what is a routing number? Well, a routing number uniquely identifies a bank. So an example where you might have encountered this before is if you've ever had a job where you had direct deposit, where your employer has asked you for your bank information so that they can just deposit your check into your checking account directly rather than giving you a physical check, then they've asked you for your routing number, right? Or they might have asked you for a canceled check, and what they're reading off of that canceled check is the routing number. So that's how they know what bank to send the money to. And other information on the check that we're not going to talk about here, but just in case you're, you happen to have a check in your hands and you want to look at it, um, your account number and actually the number of the specific check are also down there at the bottom of the check. Okay, so the routing number is also a system that uses check digits. So a routing number is a nine-digit long number, that's the format, and the ninth digit is a check digit. And the way that we validate a routing number is again using a weighted sum, and this time the weight pattern is going to be 739, 739, 739. Now remember what that means. This means I'm going to take the first digit of my routing number and multiply it by 7. The second digit of my routing number is going to get multiplied by 3. Third digit gets multiplied by 9, and so on. And all of those products, I add them all up, and then the total should again end in 0. And if it ends in 0, then the number is valid. Okay, so just as an example, let's look at this routing number, 11100025. So what do I do? Same kind of thing I did before. I'm going to write down the digits here vertically, 0, 0, 0, 4 zeros, and then a 2 and a 5. And my weight pattern is 739, 739, 739. Okay, so 1 times 7, 1 times 3, 1 times 9, 0, 0, 
0, 0, 2 times 3 is 6, 5 times 9 is 45. And then again, I add all these numbers up. 7 plus 3 plus 9. I'm not going to bother adding those zeros because that's not going to do anything. Plus 6 plus 45. So on my calculator, I'm typing in 7 plus 3 plus 9 plus 6 plus 45 gives me 70. And this ends in 0. So that means this routing number is valid. Now, the routing number system detects substitution errors and most transposition errors, just like the UPC system. And in addition, because of the more complicated weight pattern, this is actually going to be able to detect some jump transposition errors as well. So next time, we're going to talk about two more ID number systems. Specifically, we're going to talk about ISBNs, which stands for International Standard Book Number. So this is a system for identifying books. And then also credit card numbers, which you're probably familiar with. And each of these systems is actually going to use not quite a weighted sum, but a variation on the weighted sum systems that we talked about in this video. And what we're seeing is that the more elaborate, the more complicated a check digit system is, the more likely it is to be able to detect more different types of errors. So if you're wondering, why is this so complicated? Why are there so many steps? The reason is so that we can detect errors and know when something bad happens. The more errors we can catch, the better our system's gonna be.